Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. John's for this Remembrance Day service. Um, it's also quite poignant, and it's exactly 100 years since the War Memorial was erected in 1921 um, by public subscription, so it belongs to the parish. And the old idea was at the end of the First World War, when the British had lost over 700,000 killed and 1,600,000 plus injured. It affected everybody in the community. So it is right and proper that we hold our remembrance service. Now just on the formalities, what's going to happen at the end of the service, we will go out and form uh, round the War Memorial for wreath laying. We'll form a procession to leave and that procession will be led by the scouts, followed by the padre, followed by the wreath layers who will go out the north door, which is there, and form Hollow Square. Then can I ask everybody else to carefully join us outside for the wreath laying ceremony and also to point out that there is a retiring collection You'll see collection balls in aid of the British Legion. Thank you.
God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may, together, live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who, in bereavement, disability and pain, continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts, past and present, have been given and taken away. We remember the fallen. They came from the farms and the factories, from the schools and the stores, for our freedom. In remembrance, 1914-18 war, Albert Amo, A. J. Bennett, J. E. Bouvry, Frank Bryant, William Collins, John Davis, Ernest Digman, Ralph Dixon, James Flippens, Eric Hartwell, Albert Hatter, Ernest Haywood. Tom Hiscock, George Hopkins, Sidney Jenkins, Harry Jones, Randolph Jones, Amos Jordan, Nelson Lansley. Edward Lovelock, Christopher Matthews, John Meeson, Ernest Norton, Alfred Pierce, Bertram Pierce, James Pierce. William Perry, Frank Phillips, Tom Rudman, William Sims, D. Stevenson, Harry Tarrant, Joseph Taylor, Percy True, George Walters, James Watts, Hubert Watley, the 1939 1945 war, <coughs> Robin. Bannister, Sidney Cook, Ronald Dean, Edward Hillstone, Michael Hankey, John Harland, Gilbert Harrison, Reginald Jones, Edmund Larkham, Peter Lay, John Mackenzie, 
Ernest Matthews, William Moore, Arthur Pynchon, James Rudman, Reginald Salisbury, Peter Salter, Arthur Saunders, Stanley Saunders, William Smith, Sidney Tarrant, Ernest Webb, Albert Yates, and from the Troubles in Northern Ireland, Thomas Rudman. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
Grant them, O Lord, eternal rest, and let thy perpetual shine upon them. Ever-living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our second hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly before our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sit for our reading.
The reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 to 8. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be and what will be the sign that all of these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am here. I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Here endeth the lesson. May the words of my lips and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I wonder what was going through your mind during that two-minute silence. Was it a family forebears who died in the two world wars or other conflicts? I about doubt there's been anyone here whose family wasn't affected in some way. Or maybe that long list of names read by Mick for us just before. For some, I know, it would be far more poignant remembering friends and close colleagues from the most recent conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan, maybe having witnessed directly. The majority of us will have no conception of what must be in the depth of their minds. What is it that keeps us coming here year by year, here in church, that makes it so important to keep on remembering and is there a difference this year? I wonder if part of it is because on one level the seeming futility of it all, as you remember thousands of teenagers and those in their early twenties sent over the top to inevitable death. Lives cut short even before their prime because of failures by our leaders and political masters. I imagine that for those who are in Afghanistan, there must be a feeling of futility and anger at the abject failure of our leaders after the events this summer. Please don't get me wrong, I'm no way trying to undermine the sheer bravery and courage of those heroes. Would I have been brave enough to step over those trenches as the whistles blew or gone daily on patrol among Taliban controlled villages. And the freedom we enjoy today, the absence for at least the last couple of decades from the predicted Islamic extremist terror on our streets, we owe in large to the bravery of those young men and women, and we need to keep honouring them. But I wonder whether part of why we are here, and here especially in church, and what might have been going through some minds during the silence, is the need to make sense of it all. The need to find some meaning in the futility, meaning in the lives cut short, those that grow not old as we grow old. 
And perhaps things are different this year in that the pandemic has given most of us here who can't remember back to the Second World War a taste of what it means to be part of a national crisis and tragedy which none can ignore but which has also taken lives of loved ones, friends and neighbours in, in what at some point seemed equally random and arbitrary in its way. Once again, we've come through a time of collective suffering and a time when fear has been around and still is, like no other, certainly in my lifetime. A long and rambling introduction, perhaps, but we're getting, I think, to the nub of it, that what we are trying to make sense of, really, is our own fragility our own vulnerability, and yes, even our own mortality. And coming before God in fragility and vulnerability is a good place to start. For me, I can really only make sense of it before God and through the prism of the Bible. The Bible begins with God, the eternal creator, the source of infinite love at the center of the universe, bringing, things, bringing all things into existence, loving all things into existence, as the creation stories are narrated in the first pages. Yes, they don't give a scientific account of how, but more science can bring again to, uh, more than science, the Bible can begin to answer the question of why. Next we have the story of Adam and Eve, emblematic of all that is wrong, as in eating of the forbidden fruit, they disobey the word of God, the, that source of infinite love, by following their own egos, their own selfishness and greed. And throughout history, that has been at the heart of all that is wrong in the world, Mankind set on its own selfishness and greed. Each of us set on our own egos, our own selfishness and greed. The rest of the Bible is a story of God trying to win us back through Christ. The whole of the Old Testament is pointing to the new, pointing to Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. God coming to earth, and we'll be celebrating that in a few weeks' time. There's a story in John's Gospel about a close friend of Jesus who dies. Jesus, is, Jesus goes to Lazarus's tomb and raises him to life again. But even knowing what he's going to do, before then, at the graveside, Jesus is moved to tears by the suffering of those around. That famous shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. And John records that when Jesus saw Lazarus' sister weeping and the Jews who were with him, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Deeply moved doesn't really capture what the Greek means which is more akin to that deep shock that can come over you when the most awful thing happens. It's like a moment, the moment a priest told me, when he was rung up to say his wife and daughter had been involved in a serious car accident. That gut-wrenching, deep emotion, so difficult to comprehend. So here we see an all-powerful God who knows he can and will raise Lazarus in Christ, deeply moved and intimately grieving, not aloof from the world but at the centre of all that is happening, sharing the shock and grief of those around, deep in the very depth of our emotions. Very soon Jesus will be facing his own death hanging on the cross for the sin and hurt of the world, suffering for us as he suffers with us. God 
suffering for us as he suffers with us. But that is not the end of the story. Three days later, Jesus conquered death, rising again to glory, and is alive today and still at work in the world. For the people of Milton Lilbourne, a hundred years ago, presumably searching as, they, as we are for meaning in the horror of the previous six years, this was the iconography they chose to remember. If you were going to depict the World War I in stained glass or any other medium, I wonder what you would choose. I would imagine it would be something reflecting the evil and the atrocities. But they chose to depict Christ rising from the dead. So if you can see on the left, you have St. Peter in chains, you have St. George on the right, and in the centre, Christ coming up out of the tomb with a sleeping centurion uh, by the side. And at the bottom, I am the resurrection and the life. The very words Jesus used to Lazarus' sister on that occasion when he brought Lazarus from the dead. I am the resurrection and the life. For the people of Milton Lilbourne in those days, that seems to be how they uh, brought meaning into the futilityness. So futility, vulnerability and mortality, how can we make sense of it? But through the Bible we see the root of the problem explained and all human conditions are there, summed up by our turning from God to our own selfishness. Jesus knew, as two days before his own death, in the profound prophecy about the future that we saw in our reading, he was still foreseeing wars and rumours of wars. And yet, in Jesus, God is intervening directly through Jesus' life and death, being with each of us, to the very depth of our emotions, whatever they may be. But then conquering death, rising to glory to be alive with each of us today. Teenage lives may have been cut terribly short, but the surety of the truth of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, in that we realize that while life on this earth may have been cut short, that is nothing compared to eternity with Jesus in glory. An offer that is there for all of us if we live and believe in him. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will guide in the ways of freedom, justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who bear arms on behalf of the nation, that we may have, dis that we may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, that you will turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless that in all their trials they may have known your love and support. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never be known. Hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future. For you are the source of all life and hope, <clears throat> now and forever. Amen. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We stand to sing our next hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. We say together, Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind 
in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your spirit. Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that we that have not been yet cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. And our final hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. God save our
Those of the departed by the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Mm. Ready for fall off and catch everybody else. That's true. I'll be the I'll be the cushion for you guys. Okay. So if there's a fire upstairs. I've got a whole jump on this, that'll that'll help. If there's a fire upstairs, upstairs, you've got to go Next week. No, no, it's Thursday. We are next week. Oh, I'm not.